Okay, so this is lesson 2-1, which is vertex form of a quadratic function. And our essential question is, how does the equation of a quadratic function in vertex form highlight key features of the function's graph? So the first thing that we need to define is what vertex form is. So this right here is standard form, and we'll learn about that in 2-2. But this, so vertex form highlights the vertex of the parabola. So you can see our graph over here to the right. The graph of a quadratic is called a parabola. Um, your function is going to have an x squared somewhere in it. And so vertex form is right here. Where, so it's a times x minus h squared plus k. And hk is the vertex of your parabola. So um, this is probably one of the most useful forms. You're going to notice that it looks familiar to when we started looking at transformations in the previous chapter, and you'll keep seeing forms of this in, as we go through each parent function with every chapter. Okay, so the first one is how are the transformations of the graph of f of x equals x squared related to an equation representing another quadratic function? So what we're doing is we're identifying what these things are doing to our graph. So first of all, the negative out front means it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Ah. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Okay, x-axis. Okay, and then the one-half we know from when we did transformations, we know that one-half is going to make it wider. We could also use the correct terminology and say that it is a vertical shrink or vertical compression. And then we have a horizontal shift. This is going to move left to. So if I graph this over here, this is just going to be a rough sketch here. So our normal parent function for f of x equals x squared looks something like that. So what this, let me change colors here, let's make it blue. So what this is going to do is we are going to shift it to the left too. And it's going to make it wider and open down. So that's what that parabola roughly would look like. Okay, so then our next one so we have a 2 out front, so this is going to make it narrower, or we could say vertical stretch. This minus 1 inside is going to shift it to the right 1, and the minus 3 outside is going to shift it down 3. So again, we can kind of sketch over here. Here's my parent function. Let's pick a different color. Let's make it red. Okay, so I'm going to go to the right one and down three. And it is going to be narrower. So that's roughly what that would look like. Okay. So here's our second example. Uh, determine key features of a quadratic function. So what are the key features of the quadratic function f of x equals 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 4? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this, and then we're going to talk about key features here. So I know from looking at this that I don't even have to type it into Desmos. I can just automatically tell that my vertex is going to be positive 3, 4. And again, I can tell that because that's my h and that's my k. So that's why vertex form is super useful for visualizing what the graph is going to look like. So I'm going to shift to the right 3 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's my vertex. And that 2 we know is going to make it narrower. So there's a sketch of what this parabola is going to look like. So um, key features... So we know that that right there is our vertex. On this particular graph, because this parabola opens upward, this is a minimum. If your parabola opened down, then you would have a maximum. So on this one, we have a minimum. 
Um, we have, my graph is not great here, but okay, you get the idea. Okay, we have a vertical line that goes through the vertex. This is called the axis of symmetry. Okay, and then some other things. We've, we've practiced domain and range with um, all types of functions, but it's always helpful to come back and kind of review that. So a domain of, of any parabola is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And my range on this one, so I have a, a minimum value. So my minimum value is 4, and then it's going up forever, so it's up to a positive infinity. So that's, those are the key features of that graph. Okay, so our last example here says to write an equation of a parabola given the graph. So it says the height of a thrown ball is a quadratic function of the time it has been in the air. The graph of the quadratic function is the parabolic path of the ball. The vertex of the graph is at 120, and the path of the ball includes the point 0, 4. What is an expression that defines the function? Write the quadratic equation in vertex form and in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so I don't have enough room on this slide, but we can see here's our visual. Um, we have a sketched graph, but we're going to do this, talk about how to do this algebraically. Okay, so we know that vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So what we were given in the problem is we were given that the vertex is at 120, and we were given that just a random point along the path of the ball is 0, 4. So what that actually tells us is four of the five letters that are in our um, formula there. So a point, anytime you're given a point, you're given an x and a y. And we know the vertex is the h and the k. Okay, so we're going to plug those four variables in. So y is 4, we don't know a, x is 0, h is 1, and k is 20. Okay, now we're going to simplify. So this is 4 equals a times negative 1 squared plus 20. Negative 1 squared is just 1, so this would be 4 equals 1a, or I can just write a plus 20. Then I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, so I get negative 16 equals a. So now I have enough information to write vertex form. So vertex form is going to be y equals negative 16 times x minus my h, which is 1, squared plus my k, which is 20. Okay, so this is vertex form, and then if we go back to the previous, uh, the directions, it says that they want us to write it in standard form as well. So what I'm going to do there is I'm actually going to just multiply this out. So this is negative 16 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus 20. So I need to FOIL the x minus 1 times x minus 1. I'm going to leave the 16 out for now and FOIL this. So if I FOIL it, I get x squared plus negative 1x plus negative 1x, so that would be minus 2x plus 1 equals 20. Now I'm going to distribute that negative 16. So this would be negative 16x squared plus 32x minus 16 plus 20. And our final step is to combine like terms. So we have negative 16x squared plus 32x plus 4. So that right there is standard form. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions.